Hello and welcome to Unleash Monday, where we talk about the brain, especially the gifted brain, and how does it affect our thinking and experience of the world differently. There are a lot of stereotypes and stigma around giftedness, and I'm here to challenge those. I'm here to raise awareness and to have a conversation around this topic of what does it mean to be a gifted adult. Common experience among gifted folks is that they feel out of place. They don't quite fit in. They are too sensitive, too intense, too emotional, too overexcitable, and too deep thinkers about the world and about themselves. So if you have been called too much of about anything, then this show is for you. My name is Nadia. I'm too loud, too colorful, too bubbly, too bossy, and I love to talk too much. So welcome to my world, and I'm so happy you are here. Hi, and happy Monday. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you for joining today. Today... I have Julie Skolnick back on the show, and Julie has been a guest before. She was on the show in January this year, and she came back today because she is launching a conference for 2E adults, and it's the first ever such conference, and I'm actually part of this amazing conference, so I thought it's the best timing to have her back on the show because now registration is open and she's going to tell us a little bit more what's going to happen during the conference, why it's needed, and also other things that we didn't cover earlier this year. But if you want to listen to the first episode that aired on January 18th, and it's episode number 14. So I'm going to put a link in the show notes so you can just click and listen to that episode as well, because we try not to repeat ourselves and really give you some really new insights today and cover more and focus really what's happening at this conference, who are the speakers, and yeah, just have a listen. We covered a little bit more, obviously. (laughs) I had a lot of questions for Julie. And most importantly, this conference is going to be absolutely free. It's on the 1st of November, 2021. And for 24 hours, all content is going to accessible free. But if you want to have access for forever, then you can purchase the conference access and you will get a little bit of extras to this, a few bonuses from all the speakers. And it's very affordable for the amount of content that there is. And if you use the link that I put in the show notes, it's an affiliate link that I got from Julie. So basically, if you purchase through this link, I will also get a little bit reimbursed for my efforts of being part of this conference. So that will mean a lot. So thank you for using this link if you choose to do purchase the conference. But again, Julie makes it available for free for 24 hours on the 1st of November. But we're going to cover all of this during our talk. So I'm I'm not going to say anything more otherwise... I'm just repeating what Julie is going to say. So without further ado, let's just dive right into this episode. Here's Julie. Welcome, Julie. I'm so excited to have you back on the show. And there's a good reason why you're here. So welcome. Thank you, Nadia. It's so fun to talk to you and so important to get all this information out to your listeners. So I greatly appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about your upcoming conference on 2E adults. So tell me. First ever, Nadia, nobody's done a conference for gifted and 2E adults exclusively. So this is really breaking news. You're a trailblazer. Hint, hint, I'm part of this amazing yes. conference. <laughs> yes, you are. I love it. And yeah, thank you for having me. And so, yeah, why was it important for you to have a 2E adult conference? Why is it needed? Tell us. All right. Well, so here's the deal. I, as the founder of With Understanding Comes Calm, have produced conferences under the moniker of Let's Talk 2E, because I want to get the word out there. We're always looking. You're looking. I'm looking. All the people in our space are looking. How do we shout from the rooftops about this amazing population so that everybody in the world knows who they are, but especially So they themselves know who they are. And, you know, conferences are a really great way to get a lot of people together at one time. 
So at With Understanding Comes Con, we produce and have been producing virtual conferences since 2018, and typically for parents and for educators. So this other stakeholder, gifted and two-e adults, are really important. In fact, there's very little research on this population. And so now is the time. I mean, the amount of newness that is in this conference, people talking about topics that you know, nobody's really talking about. It's so important for this population to really understand themselves and for everybody in the world to have a chance to understand who this population is. Mm. And obviously I agree completely with you. And we already talked last time why it's important for people to know who they are, but do you want to go a little bit deeper? Because I feel there's still some resistance and It's funny because I feel like gifted people usually are very curious. They want to learn everything. They're knowledge seekers. But suddenly when it comes about their own giftedness and their (laughs) two-e-ness, let's call it that, they they start to be kind of like resisting sometimes. They're like, "Mm, okay, but putting it on hold, don't really want to explore. I don't know if they're scared or there's some resistance to it. Why is it important for them to to go that route and actually do the digging and and get familiar with the topic? Well, first of all, let's back up a little on something really important you said, which is the resistance, right? Why the resistance is the first question. And the resistance is because we live in a neurotypical world where everybody expects you to be neurotypical and everybody's looking through their neurotypical lenses. And so we try, we put these neurotypical lenses on and we realize we're not really in focus. We can't really see through these neurotypical lenses because that's not really our experience. It's that old adage of fitting a square peg into a round hole, which I can't stand because I always refer to my two-way people as round pegs because I think that's supposed to be the positive thing. But anyway, whatever it is, stop trying to be somebody you're not <laughs> and, and be who you are. So that's, uh, that self-awareness is so important. So we don't get rid of our two E-ness. We don't outgrow our two E-ness or our giftedness. And if we start as a gifted or two E child, and we don't understand what that means, and we think, oh, I'm gifted. That means everything should be easy. Or I'm the parent of a gifted kid. So my kids should be easy. Or I was labeled as a gifted kid and now I'm an adult and I'm having all these issues personally, professionally. It's supposed to be easy because I'm gifted. It's, it's almost like it, it's a label that works against us. And then, of course, there are all the people who think that gifted is this fabulous thing that means that you are so simple and easy and your life is easy as well. So you're getting it kind of from all sides. And it's a little bit of why can I do this so well, but I can't do that. There must be something wrong with me. I mean, I don't know. Does that resonate with you, Nadia? <laughs> yes, <laughs> very very high. I never thought of myself of being gifted before I actually learned what it means, because there's so many stereotypes and stigmatization that, you know, I was never the best at math and had difficulties in school and questions, question the teachers. (laughs) Yeah, well, that that's the gifted part, questioning, seeking knowledge, thinking about things deeply, being affected by the world around you in such a huge way, whether it's sensory or your creative self, you know, giftedness is like a, you can think of yourself as like a deep diver. You like to deep dive into things that you're curious about. Sometimes you deep dive into feelings that you actually wish you didn't have to, or end up finding yourselves, you know, deep down in that ocean of emotion. Ooh, I got to say that again, ocean of emotion. That's what happens when you're gifted. Everything affects you in a bigger way. In fact, let me just tell you, there is a video on my website that was geared toward parents. I was working with a parent and talking to them about how to talk to their child about being gifted in 2E. And she looked at me and she said, Julie, you've got to record that. And I was like, you know, you're right. So I recorded it. And even though it's made for parents to share with their kids, I actually put it on my adult page too, because it describes this big antenna that you're like, where you take in so much from the world and affects you in a bigger, broader way. But then you also put out energy in a big, broad, intense way. And so we have to kind of figure out where and when and how we can do that 
to serve our goals of professional fulfillment and personal fulfillment as adults. Yeah. And I think you're saying this is like, we experience this, but we might not know why and how, and then we're overwhelmed. And yeah. it's contrary to this expectation of, you know, giftedness should be this high achieving people. It comes easy. You're succeeding easily in your career and your personal life, which we know is not true, but that's just, you know, the stereotype in, in society. Nobody can see me nodding, but I'm nodding to everything Nadia is saying mm. wholeheartedly. And, and those are the messages that we grow up with. And so we grow up and think, like Nadia did, I'm not gifted. Yeah. I can't do everything. But then Nadia does 50 billion things. <laughs> <laughs> and, and many of them astoundingly, unbelievably well. And, you know, then we have that perfectionism piece as giftedness, right? Like, and we're like, and oh, but I can't do this one thing, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and the imposter syndrome, I think no gifted yeah. person knows that they're gifted themselves. They might have been identified as smart at school or good at something, but whoever I talk with, they're not the ones saying like, oh yeah, I'm so smart and intelligent. I'm so gifted. Like people don't tend to do this. So if you're doubting and questioning that this could be for you, that's a good sign, isn't it as well? Well, yes. And, but I will say this, when I work with my clients, I do try to get them to the point where mm -hmm. they have such, you know, self-awareness and knowledge and love, self-love that, yeah, I am gifted and I know exactly what it means. Like, you know, I, I remember my first adult client years and years and years ago was talking to me about how when he goes to a hotel, he needs to be far from the elevator. He needs to be far from the ice machine. He needs to make sure he doesn't have feather pillows and how his wife was thinking that he was like so needy. And I was like, you're so gifted. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, yeah, I, I can relate to those things. I, I am also very particular in certain things, especially sounds and noises. Yeah. I had a client yesterday who was talking to me about how challenging it is to wear a tie, that he has this thing in his head, this thing about having like tight t-shirts around his neck. He can't deal. And, you know, he was having these aha moments as we were working together. And it's not just about the sensitivities. Okay, guys, it's about, you know, just being, a. it's like, if, if I had to say one word, it's awareness awareness of everything around you, awareness of things that you're interested in, awareness of things that are challenging for you. You're super hyper aware. Yeah. And I think the important part is being aware that you're aware because a lot of people are not aware and we don't even compare ourselves. We just think that other people are as aware as we are. But yep. then starting to look how other people's awareness differ from ours might be an interesting thing for people to kind of start digging into the topic. But let's talk about the conference a little bit more specifically. What topics are you going to cover and what, what are the people going to talk about? Okay. So first of all, let me tell you that this conference, are you ready? People who are listening, sit down because I don't want you to fall down. It's free. It is a free conference with 16 unbelievable speakers and it's a conference, not a conversation. So these awesome experts are presenting to you all the research-based information that you need to know and from their experience as professionals. So we're kind of loosely thinking of it. And when you go to the let's talk to website, you'll find that we've broken the speakers out into three sort of categories. Uh, one is self-awareness, one is professional fulfillment, one is personal fulfillment. So, but really all of them are about self-awareness because it all goes into what, what is your experience and, and how is this affecting you? But what we've specifically carved out under the self-awareness topic, we have Colin Seal talking about gifted at seven, ADHD at 37, my story and the adult costs and benefits of twice exceptionality. So pause there for a minute and let me tell you, I am all about positive reframing and strength-based approaches. So everybody who speaks at my conference is going to come from that lens of understanding and strength-based. 
So my next speaker is Jessica Hassan, Dr. Jessica Hassan, who's talking about the benefits of psychological testing with 2E adults. So if you don't know that you're gifted, you don't know that you're 2E, how do we find that out? And, and if you wanted to go through and have an assessment, Jessica's, Dr. Hassan's going to talk to us about that. And then we have the fabulous, wonderful, and beautiful Nadja Cheragetti, who is going to be talking about 2E and me a journey of self-discovery because you guys probably know as her loyal listeners that she kind of stumbled upon this through talking with a friend and figuring it out for herself what was actually going on for her. So she's going to share that, that awareness journey. Then we have Dr. PJ Cedillo, who is talking about thrice exceptional, which is sometimes a term used for culturally diverse individuals who are also 2E. But in this case, PJ is going to talk about individuals who are gifted 2E and identify as LGBTQIA+, which is a really important topic and really fascinating because there is a high cross-section gifted and 2E folks who also identify as LGBTQIA+. So, and, and that's really the first time anybody's presenting on that topic in this realm of adulthood. Then we have Michelle Kane, who's going to talk about the aging process. So her topic is, or her talk is called The Lifelong Journey of 2E Adults, Joys and Challenges of the Aging Process. So that's kind of our our self-awareness strand. And then we have a professional fulfillment and a personal fulfillment strand. So do you want me to pause here or do you want me to keep going? Yeah, please share. I'm super excited to hear all the details on the lineup here. It's I am amazing. Super, super excited too. Okay, so for professional fulfillment, we have Seth Perler, who's kind of known as the executive functioning expert. And so he's going to actually talk about adulting with executive functioning and quality of life. So executive functioning, real quick, in case you, you haven't heard those terms before, executive functioning that's all the stuff that helps you organize, prioritize, regulate, regulating emotions, regulating. It's if you think of yourself as a CEO, it's like your executive assistant. If you think of yourself as like an orchestra, it's the conductor, right? This is the purse, this is the part of you that allows your brain to do the things that you have to do. It's not that you have the ability to do it. You might have the ability to do something, but you might have a hard time initiating or staying with it or seeing it through. So he's talking about executive functioning and quality of life. Then we have Dr. Scott Barry Kaufman, who's very well known in the positive psychology world. And he has taken Maslow's needs and he has created the new hierarchy of needs and 2E. So he'll be talking about that. And Femke Hovinka from the Netherlands will be talking about burnout or bore out. Don't you love that title? Burnout or bore out. Oh man, gifted in two-way people and boredom. It's a bummer. So she's talking about two-way and finding joy and fulfillment at work. And Sarah Wayland is actually talking about autistic strengths. So she's an expert on autism and she's just in the middle of writing a book. And I convinced her to bring us her unpublished chapter and talk about autistic strengths. So it's a total first time ever for her. And then I'm talking about 2E adulting, what makes you tick and what ticks you off. Okay, people, I know you're laughing or nodding or making a checkbox in the air because you know there are things that make you tick and that take you off. That's kind of like how we roll. All right, so that's professional fulfillment. And then personal fulfillment, we have Matt Zakreski, who's a psychologist and talking about his title is Falling in Love is Hard on OEs or Overexcitabilities. And so that's like intensities that we have as gifted people. It's a defining characteristic that we have these intensities about us. So he's going to talk more deeply on what are overexcitabilities and intimacy and how it all kind of affects one another. Sue Jackson from the Damon Institute is going to be talking about the role of anxiety in the lives of gifted adults, origins, manifestations, and amelioration. I just got chills, which means at least one person out there needs to hear that talk. So she's incredible. Then we have Maggie Brown, who's coming to us from New Zealand, and she's going to be talking to us about 2E and cumulative relational trauma. Her talk is fascinating. And the idea of this cumulative micro stresses and traumas and how they affect us as adults. 
I cannot underscore the importance. Then we have Diane Allen, who is going to be talking about loneliness. And her talk is called There is More to Loneliness Than You Think. And she actually wrote a book called The Loneliness Cure. I wrote the introduction to that book, I think, maybe in 2019. But she is such an amazing, positive spin on, on being okay with being lonely sometimes or why we're lonely or how to deal with getting to be with yourself even when you're alone and making that something awesome. Two more. We have Heather Borman, who is talking about narcissism and the 2E soul. Oh my gosh, you guys. Whoa. This talk, narcissism and 2E, little teaser. Apparently, narcissistic people are drawn to empaths. Gifted and 2 e people tend to be empaths. How do we protect ourselves? What do we do about it? Why does it happen? Heather's going to talk about all that. And last but not least, Linda Rogley, who's the ADHD guru. She's going to be talking about her. Her talk's called Free to Be, ADHD, and 2E. So she's really going to talk about how it presents ADHD in adults, gifted adults, um, and some awesome life hacks. So that's the conference. And the deal is it's free. And then if you want to own it forever, you can, and you can purchase it for a very inexpensive price of 127, which is like eight bucks a session. It's actually under eight bucks a session, but there you go. And and actually, by the way, I'll say one more thing. And then I know Nadia, you're dying to jump in. So it's free. You can get it at uh, let's talk to me.com or Nadia is going to put a link in the show notes. And then If you decide to purchase it, you actually get a whole bunch of freebies. We're offering a really cool improv session with a fabulous therapist who does it for two adults. We're having some live coffee chats and every single speaker is providing a free gift, a downloadable, or I know Heather's recording a really cool meditation session that you'll get. So lots of cool stuff. You can get it for free for 24 hours launching November 1, 2021, and or you can purchase it at the early bird price. Yeah. And you were so gracious. You were giving me an affiliate link. So with yeah. every purchase of the conference, you're also supporting me indirectly or directly. So thank you. Yeah. So use the link that Nadja put in the show notes, because that will be her affiliate link. And that way we get to support all the awesome work she does. Thank you. Oh my God. I have chills because when you shared this lineup, I'm like, oh my God, I'm actually happy. I didn't know what I'm going to get myself into before. <laughs> I have so much imposter syndrome now. Oh my God. These names, you know, I'm like starstruck. <laughs> um, well, you know, you are speaking from the heart and that is why Nadja, I asked you to be at this conference because you are exhibit A right? You're going through it and your heart is so big that you're sharing it with the world. So other people can have a faster track to understanding and using strategies that will be helpful. I have one question now that you shared, you know, the lineup and this very first two e conference and i think we just jumped right in but we didn't even say what two e stands for so two e stands for twice exceptionality which means gifted plus a learning difference and learning disability right did i say that correctly yeah yeah you're get you're identified as gifted with a learning difference or learning disability which could be anything from ADHD to autism, everything in between dyslexia, dysgraphia, but it can also include working memory, processing speed, anxiety. So all of those things can be the second E, but the real nut to crack is what is gifted, right? And so the gifted piece, which I will be going over in my session, I'll do a deep dive into what I call the chocolate layer cake of giftedness and just 30, 20 seconds The frosting is the part that's above, around, and between all of those layers, all the three layers of that gifted layer cake. And that frosting is like that intellectual piece that everybody thinks gifted is, the bright, smart, potential, all that stuff. And then you have these three layers and it's asynchronous development or what we talked about in the beginning, where you have certain things that you're really, really strong in and other parts that are lagging 
and the development at different rates. That's asynchronous development, perfectionism, the other side of which can be anxiety, and then intensities, or what I referred to before as overexcitability. So that is the working definition that I'm working from for giftedness. Yeah. And so why is it important to look at these things combined? Like why not have for example, have a conference on giftedness and then one specifically, you know, for ADHD, for autism, for dyslexia, for something else. Why is it really important to bring this together? Once you see one 2E person, you've seen one 2E person. Once you've seen one gifted person, you've seen one gifted person. It's like a whole cocktail of different things going into each person. So you can't have 20 million conferences. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could. I can't, but you need to, first, some people, I try really hard to say gifted and 2E. People know me as a 2E expert, but not everybody is aware. So I try to cast my net really widely. In fact, when I started working in 2014, my tagline was gifted and distractible. It's actually the name of my free newsletter, gifted and distractible, trying to really cast my net really wide. And because we use asynchronous development as a defining characteristic, in my mind, it implies that giftedness kind of folded in is, has two E-ness. So okay. that's, that's really why. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Let me just maybe rephrase that a little bit, not just on a conference level, but somebody for example, working with a therapist, you were here last time on the show really emphasizing that if you're gifted, please go and work with a gifted therapist and coach. And some people might be working with an ADHD specialist or with somebody, you know, familiar with autism. But why is it important that such a professional does understand giftedness and not just, you know, the learning difference or the learning disability? Gotcha. Okay. So when you watch Jessica Hassan, who is the PhD who's doing the session on evaluations, adult evaluation. She's actually going to go over that very specifically. And I asked her to, because you can't just have the person who says, oh, I do evaluations. Sure. Come on in. And you're going to hear in Nadja's session why that's not a good idea. Nadja had a very negative experience when she went to, you know, I hate to say generic, but somebody who wasn't familiar with gifted and two week. It's really important, you know, riding a bicycle and driving a car, are two totally different things. And supporting, guiding, evaluating a gifted or two week person is a totally different thing than supporting, guiding, or evaluating a neurotypical person. So the reason this conference is so important. And the reason I always start with self-awareness is because so many people are trying to fit themselves in this neurotypical box that they're not in. And if schools, if workplaces, if therapists, if coaches, if professionals you're working with say, sure, of course I can do that. And you ask them, how many two E clients do you have? How many two E employees do you have? What do you do with two E employees? And they're like, what's that? You know, you're in the wrong place. I, I I would probably say, I don't know if any employer in Switzerland has heard of 2E, I hope, and I'm going to spread the word, but it's well, still. Okay, so that's a really good point. And in Julie's fantasy land, everybody knows and values and realizes that 2E folks are really the people to hire and work with and be with. But you might use that wider net, right? Like, do you have employees who, you know, how much say do I have over sort of the environment I work in, right? Because you don't want to be, end up in a toxic environment. You might ask, you know, what is their flexibility on certain things, right? Of course, adults are constantly asking me, do I go to my employer and say, I have ADHD and I'm gifted and I need this, this, and this. And it's like, not out of the box. That's not the thing to do. But You'll know by asking some questions of like, how do people work best here? How do you find, like, what's hard for employees here? What are things that, you know, asking those general questions to get the idea of what the environment is like is really important. And how do you even know what to ask? And if you don't know what you need, that's where we have to start. So that's where we get to my session, which talks about what makes you tick and what ticks you off. Because we want as much as makes you tick to be happening in your workplace. 
So my client yesterday, my adult client, he's local. So we're meeting on my screened in porch because COVID and he was like, this is the ideal place for me to think like there's nature and fresh air and Some people really need that. Some people really need a boxed in cubicle and they need to not see any distractions. Some people, so it's being aware of what you need and what makes you think and be the best you can be. Hmm. And I think I had probably some sort of kind of understanding, probably I felt different and judged for what my needs were. And I probably never really voiced them because I felt weird about it or was like, better hide this part of my right, or I should get over it I should why don't I just get over it put my big girl pants on and get over it well exactly you get over it get over it grow up finally <laughs> I'm almost 40 I I don't do growing up so I gave up on that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I guess learning about this helped me really get the vocabulary and and also what you talked about the loneliness like it's like oh my God, there's other people out there that feel the same. I'm not the only weirdo in the world. And there's language. And when you look at the bell curve and you see the tiny, teeny, tiny percentage of people that we make up in the world, it stands to reason why it's hard to find your tribe. And when we do find our tribe, holy moly, it's awesome. And by the way, on that note, and I'm so glad we're talking about this, we have a dedicated Facebook page called Let's Talk 2E Adults. And if you go over there and request to join, I'm going to approve you and you're going to get to meet people from all over the world and you'll see adult specific posts and cool stuff like that. So we really want to build community because that loneliness is the real deal. And how great to find people who are local to you and how great to find people all over the world who are like you and be able to talk about things that matter. Oh, I can't wait. I'm super excited. So prior to our conversation today, I re-listened to our previous conversation. And so people can go back and listen to that. So we're not going to repeat ourselves today. But I remember we talked about imposter syndrome and the underachievement of gifted people. And I find this is such an important topic because I really think gifted people struggle so much from this imposter syndrome but then I go on LinkedIn and imposter syndrome is all over it's kind of like it seems like to be a buzzword currently and everybody suffers from it and that might be true is there a difference if you're gifted and imposter syndrome or is imposter syndrome all the same or such a great question such an interesting question because what does imposter syndrome come to mean uh self-doubt right? But that doesn't dig deep enough into imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome that you're talking about for the gifted and 2 individual is this deep-seated feeling of being a fraud that people have expectations about you because of your gifted label. And Therefore, how could you actually be gifted because you don't live up to those standards? And therefore, there's like a cascade of nothing really being real about you and your strengths. So imposter syndrome, you know, is very much tied also to anxiety and and gifted underachievement, meaning that you think to yourself, right? Like as a perf- it's all tied into perfectionism as well. So if you are gifted more likely than not, you have perfectionistic tendencies, which by the way, can be positive, right? That can be your incentive to do your best work. But when it causes you to refuse to do something or not try to do something, then we're in the unhealthy zone. And we have these expectations that we assume others have for us. We have expectations for ourselves and we just decide we can't we can't commit, we can't do it, we can't start even. Or if I do do something and I do it really well, this is where gifted underachievement comes in, and I do really well, people are going to always expect me to do well. And I'm supposed to always do well. So I'm not even going to try. And that's a really hard thing to undo once that happens. So if you're feeling that way out there and you're listening to this, take a deep breath. Consider 
why you have this sense that you shouldn't even try and recognize, here comes the positive reframe, recognize that you care so much that it's almost working against you. So I'm not asking you to care less. I'm asking you to give yourself a break. Nobody's going to, you know, no horrific situation is going to happen if you try and it doesn't meet the expectation you have. And in fact, if you try, it's a learning process. And that's pretty much life. Life is a learning process and we cannot be expected with the gifted label, with the TUI label to come out and do everything perfectly because then what's the point of life? Ooh, I got philosophical. <laughs> and a lot of gifted children, I, I think that's what I learned is that when you're gifted and even if you're not identified, some stuff might be easier, come easier to you. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have this experience of failing. And mm -hmm. then once it gets harder, that's right. It, it's harder to, to learn failures and to accept failure and to stick with something. You think something's wrong with you. You think something all of a sudden broke. Hmm. And then if it's not that something broke, then something wasn't there in the first place. And I was wrong. I'm a fraud. And that's hmm. that imposter syndrome coming. In. Yeah. So it's, It's different also for gifted people learning something new and stick with it and try it out. Whereas neurotypicals might have, you know, got over this a little bit easier by learning trial and error. Is yeah, yeah, they don't have the same expectations hmm. by others or themselves. Hmm. Wow. Okay. I, I can't wait for this conference to happen. <laughs> is there anything else you want to share or? want the listeners to know something you wish everybody knew? Well, I guess what I'm going to say to you is I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to know what your needs are. And those needs are strengths and challenges. What, what do you have to sort of mitigate for in your life to allow you to be your best you. And the bottom line is everybody should think about how do I live my best life with the least amount of regrets? If you're gonna regret not trying something, you're gonna regret not pushing through to finish something, then give yourself a pep talk And give yourself some kindness so that you can try something that's hard or scary. So living without regrets, being kind to yourself, that's really what it's about, guys, to be a successful, gifted, and two-way adult. And if you need an external pep talk, then come and watch the conference, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and, and I guess I should say, and you'll probably have this in the show notes too, but I offer a free 20-minute phone consultation to anybody in the world. You can schedule it at julieskolnick.youcanbook.me. Okay, and we put that in the show notes. So <laughs> don't need to spell it out. And all the other links that where people can find you, do you want to mention it? And then we also put it in the show notes. You don't need to spell them out. Sure. With understanding comes calm.com. That is my main website. And then let's talk to we.com is my conference and community page. And actually we haven't even talked about two e resources.com where you can find resources for the gifted and two e population categorized in five categories, education, clinicians, consultants, associations, and enrichment. It's a fully searchable site. You can see all of Nadia's stuff there. She's listed there and lots of other people. If you happen to be a gifted or two-e provider in any way, shape, or form, and you would like to list there, you can let us know. It's absolutely free and open 24 hours, seven days a week for anybody to peruse. And it's a great resource area. And it's like our exhibitor hall for the conference. All of our speakers are listed there with lots of information about them. 
Wow. Thank you so much, Julie, for coming, for sharing, for organizing this conference, for having all these resources out. And I know you like that was also not your career goal starting out fresh out of college, right? <laughs> you yeah, yeah. When, when you parent three two e kids, you got to figure it out. <laughs> And being one of them yourself, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, thank you so much for coming. And it's been a pleasure having you. It's been a pleasure being part of this conference. And yeah, I feel like I found a, a really great friend in you. So thank you very much. Uh, me too. I know. Isn't it so great when you find like people who think about things the way you think about things and orbit in the world in the same way you orbit? It's so important. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Nadia. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed listening to our conversation and makes you a little bit curious about what's going to happen at this conference and all the links to the Facebook group, to the sign up affiliate link, to all the resources Julie was talking about, her link to book a 20 minute consultation with her. I put everything in the show notes. So just scroll down and that way you can access everything that Julie provides. So thank you so much for listening and hopefully I see you at the, the conference. And if you want to be the first to get all the information, then please join the newsletter at unleashmonday.com. And you will also see that there's a community button. So currently we closed enrollment. But at some point, we're probably going to open it again. We're currently a small group of founding members in our community. So I just want to say hello to my amazing community. And it's a community for gifted and 2E women. And this is just something we're starting from scratch. And as soon as we have a little bit momentum and figure this out a little bit more, then we're going to reopen the doors. So if you want to be the first person to come and join this community then you can find the wait list at unleashmonday.com when you click on community and yeah if you just want to support the show in any other way then please 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 subscribe to the show on apple podcast you can click these three dots on the top and you can follow it and then you can like it you can give it five stars and then you can even leave a written review and the more you basically download subscribe like put some stars and leave a written review the more people will get exposed to this show so basically that helps the algorithm show it to other people and that's why i'm constantly asking you to do this so thank you so much because i feel the more people that hear about this, the more people can also get access to resources and learn about themselves. And as Julia is saying, it's really important that people understand who they are so that they can have a better quality of life. So that's basically my goal for all of you. And with that said, I'm going to let you go and I see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.